What is going on guys? A few days ago I went out and took some wide angle photos and today I'm going to edit one and I'm going to go through my edit. Two disclaimers. Number one, if you want a technically perfect way to edit, this is not it. Two, if anyone thinks that I'm doing this wrong, this is just how I edit. I don't know if I do it right, I don't know if I'm doing it wrong, but this is just how I do it to get the photo that I want out of the images that I've captured. So without any more, let's jump in and let's start editing a photo. So I've got these four here, which were my picks from the other day. So we're gonna edit this photo here, number three. I think that's gonna be the one. We're gonna hit D on our keyboard to go to the develop mode. If you don't know, then you can hit G on your keyboard to go to your gallery and then D for develop. So the first thing we're gonna do, this is a wide angle shot. So the first thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna find a, cr a crop. Let's hit auto on that, see how straight that goes to the statue. That's pretty straight. I am gonna put this on Instagram, probably. So let's crop it four by five. I'm just gonna keep it real basic, keep it centered. Next thing I'm gonna go down to is remove chromatic aberration and enable lens profile corrections. And then I'll go down to the transform tool. Now sometimes I'll use this a lot, especially on some of these wide angle shots. Where it stands at the minute, we're slanted back a little bit because I wanted to look up, but I'm gonna pronounce that a little bit more. Hit constraint crop. And then we're just gonna pull that a little bit more vertically and probably just hit the rotate a little bit as well. And there's my base image, that's what I'm gonna edit. So now I've done that, I'm gonna head back up to the basics tab. I'm not gonna take you through this, I'll probably just speed through this because like, I don't really wanna tell you what exposure and highlights are, you probably know. Okay, so that's some simple adjustments done just to the basics tab. I've cooled it off a little bit just to get a bit of blue in the sky. Now, when I do the most of my tone work and something I'm doing a lot lately is in the tone curve itself. So a really good starting point for the tone curve is to put a point on each one of these, which is just your low, mids and highs. You don't have to keep these points on those lines either. You can move them about. So a thing I like to do is just to drag that down a little bit and we're gonna lift the base. That will give us a nice filmic kind of fade at the bottom there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these mids down and I'm gonna keep them just under that line and then duck my highlights. So that creates like a sort of an S curve, but under the line. That looks pretty cool. That might be a little too dark at the bottom. So just like a slight tweak up. And there we suddenly have a really nice cool tone across that whole image. If I wanna then maybe lift the shadows a little bit, I can just a touch, just to kind of balance it because I was losing the statue a little bit at the front there. Color, now color, again, is so personal preference. Me, at the minute, I love my moody tones, I love my moods, so things like the greens here, I'm gonna send them a little bit more towards the yellow probably going to take the saturation out of them and I'm going to duck the luminance. And if I switch this on and off, you can see how much of a difference that makes. So we're going to go through these bit by bit, kind of figure out where we want our colors. And it's, it is entirely up to you. There is no wrong way to do this. The best thing to do when you're starting out is to just play around. I spent ages playing around with the HSL sliders. Now we've sorted out our basics, our tone curves, and our colors. So now I'm gonna use a lot of different masks to accentuate the subject or subjects, whatever you've got in your image. Again, this is really personal preference, how much of this you want. But what I tend to do is I tend to start with select the sky. On this shoot was a really moody day and we really, I really want to bring out the mood of those clouds. We're going to take the highlights out. We're going to lower the exposure a little bit, just a touch. And then we're going to add some dehaze. Again, you, like, I didn't feel like I pushed that very far, but it's having a massive effect. If you push that all the way up, it's going to wreck your image. Um, I try and be really like subtle with every effect that I use, even if it doesn't come across like it sometimes. That's taken quite a lot. So if we turn that on and off, you'll see that's off. 
and then that's on. So it is quite extreme. If you're playing with any settings, get the image to the point where you think that's cool and then switch that on and off. And sometimes you'll see that actually that's quite a lot. So I realized I've taken a lot of brightness out of the sky. So I'm just gonna up that again a little bit. Cool. Next, we're gonna go and we are gonna get a linear gradient mask. Now, this depends on the image itself, but for this image here at the bottom corner here, you can see there's kind of like a natural sort of darkness going on in this bottom corner. So we're gonna accentuate that with a mask. We pull that up a little bit to the side. I'm just gonna lower the exposure touch, lower the highlights, lower the shadows. And then we're gonna do exactly the same on the other side, but from a slightly different angle. Now, the reason I do linear masks on the edges is because if my subject is centered, I want the eye to be drawn to the middle. Now you could, and I have in the past, gone down to the effects panel and just used um, a vignette, but sometimes you don't want the vignette to go all the way around the image. Sometimes you just want it in like a couple of key areas. So I really, really only wanted to cover that bottom corner and a little bit of that side, but I didn't want the vignette to go all the way around the top as well. Once those are in place, I'm gonna hit another mask and I am gonna select my subject. Now, if Lightroom's having a good day, it's gonna select that statue right in the middle. It has, it's probably added a little bit too much. So we're gonna subtract from this mask using a brush up the size of our brush and just paint away some of these extra bits that we don't really want. You can take more time with your mask than I did. I'm just trying to get through it. With this mask selected, we are just gonna up the exposure a touch. We're gonna up the highlights a little bit, lift the shadows a bit, and then we're gonna add a bit of clarity. That's pretty cool, that highlights our subject. So if we go to the mask here and we turn them on and off, you can see that actually they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting here in this image. Some will probably say it's too much. I would probably agree, but you know what? I like it, so it's okay with me. I'm happy with it, that's what matters. One more thing that you can do, might not suit this photo, but it does suit some cloudy photos. If you get a radial gradient, We're gonna tilt this on its edge. Bring it a little smaller maybe, and then we're gonna place it just up in the sky here, just leading down to that statue. And then I'm gonna up the exposure, I'm gonna up the highlights, and I'm gonna up the shadows. And that just gives us this kind of line of light. If you push that really extreme, you'll see what it's doing. Obviously, you wouldn't leave it like that because it just doesn't look right at all. But just a little bit of it just helps bring your eye to that center point. So this is before and after the masks. It's a pretty strong look. I mean, I'll probably get rid of that because that's not needed right now. There you go. I think I'm pretty much done there. I do it that way every time, whether it's a wide angle photo or whatever. The main part for me with the masks is when it's wide angle because you've got so much more information in that image. Sometimes selecting your subject and your focal point and then accentuating that can really help. So I hope you liked this video and got a couple of ideas to try out in your next photo. If you did, leave us a comment below. I'd love to check them out. Hit me up with your Instagram or whatever and we can chat on there. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And if you like this, because you like wide angles, then check out the POV video I shot the other day. This photo was in it. I'll see you soon.